Our God is still on his throne and ruling the affairs of man. Even as he does not change, his truths have not changed. Thankfully, God still has a people which proclaim that old-time religion, setting forth his sovereignty, and the old paths of truth where we can find rest for our souls. Welcome to Word of Sovereign Grace, a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Get your Bible, call your friends, and sit back as we open the King James Scriptures to explore the glorious Word of Sovereign Grace. Here's this week's message. Thank you. 
sinners. Now, if there's no sinners, then something's got to kill for somewhere. Because this text says he came to save sinners. And Paul says, listen, he says, of whom I washed him, huh? he says, of whom I am chief. All right? Now keep that in mind. Why, why would Paul make such a statement as that? That Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Paul, no doubt, felt that he was yet a sinner. Yet he believed in salvation by grace. He believed that Jesus Christ saved him from his sin, yet he recognized the fact that sin was in his flesh. I know he did from his letter to the church of Rome and the seventh chapter in particular when he talked about the law uh, that was in his members that warred against the law of his mind, brought him into captivity the law of sin, which was in his members. You ever experienced that? If you did, you were sinner. Well, we're all sinners. But Jesus came in the world to save sinners. And that's a faithful saying. It's worthy of all acceptation. All you got to do now is just accept that as being a fact. Paul said it was a fact, and uh, you may not understand all that, but accept it as being a faithful saying. It is faithful, Amen. and it's worthy of your acceptation. Amen. Accept that. Christ Jesus came to the world to save sinners. Now, in the 20th verse, he said, but while he thought on these things, that is, while he thought about putting her away privately, uh, somebody spoke to him. Uh, Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now I'll look at verse 21 with you for a little while this evening. I see three things I want to try to present to you as we look at this verse. First of all, we see that this holy thing that was born of this woman, they would be called Jesus, and that he would be, is, was, and is a Savior. A Savior. That's the first thing we see that there is a Savior coming. All right? Uh, he shall save his people. Secondly, we see that there is a relationship. And I might even say an ownership uh, talked about here as uh, showing a relationship that this one who is a savior is coming to save someone. And that someone that he came to save is called his people. Now his people scripturally are called by various different names in the Bible, such as sheep, uh, such as brethren, such as children, uh, and various different types of people. Uh, there's different names that they have in the Bible. But here it says in this text, he is people. He came to save, so he's a savior. He's going to save his people. And he tells me here that the ones that he comes to save are sinners. He shall come and he shall save his people from their sin. He's going to deliver them from their sin. Brother and sister, I believe that's still going on. What do you think of that? I believe Jesus died for us on Calvary's cross, but I'll tell you, Jesus is deity for you and for me right now in heaven and the glory before the Father. And I believe with all my heart, uh, Brother Norman, what if we if it, when we transgress one of God's law, uh, that Jesus Christ, our mediator, stands between us and God. And let me say it this way, Father, remember the Calvary. Remember, my blood was shed, and you are preserved in the Lord Jesus Christ, and kept by his power, and will finally one day be delivered into the shining courts of glory, and my friends delivered from this whole earth. Jesus Christ has redeemed us, and we are, by uh, one of the other names, we're a purchased possession. All right, he's going to come and redeem the purchased possession from this earth. My friends, save us from our sin. He's going to save us from our sin. He's going to change this vile body of mine and this vile body of yours and be made back in his own glorious body one day and presented there before God the Father in heaven. That thrills me, brother, the road that I think about one day. I'll stand before God holy and without praying with one of us. I'll stand before him and not have to be ashamed of my sinful flesh and the deeds that I've done and the foolish and evil thoughts that I think while I'm here on this earth. 
I love to think about that day of the hard wind that all the family of God, of God, will be gathered under in heaven and will be made to say at once and all free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. What do you mean free? I'm free from the bondage of sin. Uh, that all time makes us born. I tell you, Jesus Christ came to save sinners, and I'm expecting he's going to save me not from myself. He's going to save me from this whole world and carry me into the glory world. Uh, yes, Jesus Christ. Uh, now, as I look at this this evening, uh, first I said we see uh, that Jesus is a Savior. Secondly, we see that he comes to save a particular people called his people. And then, thirdly, we see that those people are said to be sinners. If they were not, it wouldn't have said he come to save them from the sin. So Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners, Paul said, of whom I am chief. Now I want to look this evening at the how that these people, when the text says he came to save his people from their sin, how did they become his? How did he come in procession of them? Now, uh, if this within itself is a very broad uh, subject this evening, but uh, for the sake of brevity and for the sake of time, we'll just look at a few things in God's holy word that shows us this divine relationship that we have with God and how it is that Jesus, we are His. I want to ask you this question this evening. Uh, is it not a delight to belong to the Lord Jesus? Is it not wonderful but to be one of His? Uh, somebody might say, well, how did I tell? I'm one of his. Uh, my friends, if you love uh, God, you're one of his. If you love the Lord Jesus Christ, you're one of his. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you're one of his. If you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, you're one of his. If you love the brethren, you're one of his. My friend, God, by his Holy Spirit, uh, gives a witness in your soul and uh, testifies to you that you are his. I read Paul saying uh, that it's the Spirit bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and his children. And then he said, oh, we're heirs of God and joint heirs of the Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, uh, this day, I want you to know as I speak to you, I say to you, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, I speak unto you uh, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on him, on the Lord Jesus Christ this evening. That is, that you may be encouraged uh, to press on and continue in that belief uh, him of whom you now believe. I uh, may I say to you, if you believe in him, you have eternal life. You're what it is. You're one of his, and you believe according to the working of his mighty power. But uh, when he wrought that in you, uh, that same power uh, that God used to raise his son from the dead, he raised the uh, other dead doctors in your soul, uh, my friend, and his son has taken up his abode in your life. This is Jesus Christ uh, taking the Lord to save us. That is, uh, Jesus Christ come uh, and deliver us from our sin. Oh, my friend, uh, uh, what a, a savior that we have, uh, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, are we here or am I not? There's an old song, am I here or am I not? Uh, somebody might say, why uh, would the poor say that? Am I his or am, am I maybe? He didn't know any better. I'm telling you, my friends, we have doubts and fears along the way. Uh, sometimes the devil will come along and tell you you're not. Uh, but if you believe in it, you are. I tell you, uh, he works on me all the time. And I know he works on you too. Uh, but there's one thing that I firmly believe this evening. That I'm a child of God. A uh, blood bought from heaven bound. And the devil and all his limbs. Uh, and he's going to keep me here in this world. Because uh, this world is not my home. Heaven is my home. Yeah. Uh, well, and for you, my friend, uh, God has shed his own precious blood. Uh, how did you become his? You became his as a free a gift from God the Father. Yeah. Because uh, God yeah. loves you, my friend, uh, uh, so much he gave you to Christ uh, to one who is very capable and able to save you from your sin. You couldn't save yourself. I couldn't save myself. Uh, but Jesus Christ could do it. And he did it, my friend. And so God gave you to him. I want the law of Scripture now. We find in John chapter 6. Uh, verse 37, 38, and 39, I hear of the Lord speaking, and he said this, All the Father giveth me a shall come to me. You say some of them won't? Jesus said they're all coming. Uh, yes, and how they're going to come. I want to look at that too. Jesus said, All the Father giveth me shall come to me. I love that. That's eternal security, brother boy. Uh, that's salvation. Uh, uh, yes, it is. Uh, that's eternal salvation. All that the Father giveth me and shall come to me and give that cometh unto me I will in no wise cast out. Or 
Now here's where he came to us. For I came down from heaven, not to do my will, but the will of him that sent me. This is the Father's will in all that has sent me, that of all this one, that of all which he has given me. I should have been the but raise them up again at the last day. Somebody might ask the question, well, how did they become God? To give the Christ the birth of He told you. We got a scripture in the Bible of that. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, where the apostle Paul said, that he chose us in Christ before the foundation will have good enough for me. It's good enough for Paul. It's good enough for Simon. It's good enough for me. And it's good enough for you. And my brother, just lay hold on that beautiful truth of Almighty God. You may not understand it, but they will learn to accept it as a fact of the, of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Because, my friend, it is the truth. God, being sovereign in his presence, he wants to preach today, simply chose you uh, because he loved you. And in time, he sets his love upon you and quickens you by his divine spirit. He sent his son in the world to die for you because he loved you. Yeah. Yeah. My friends, he loved you to such extent that he gave you to the son to save you. And you know, the son was willing, perfectly willing, and in perfect harmony and union with God. Oh, and then the, I, I don't have time. Well, let's get into the cut about that. But you know, uh, that's another discourse with itself. So God, I just say it this way. God chose you. The Son said, I will redeem them. And the Spirit says, well, I'll pick whatever one shall be. All right? Uh, and that, and a perfect union in that. And God gave them to the Son, and the Son was agreeable to do his part, keep his part, because the Holy Spirit, I'll keep mine. And my brother, that's the divine truth. God. Satan and all of his ends, I'll say, can't destroy that. God's word will stand forever. And this world wrapped up the plains, the truth of God will stand forever. And the redeemed, all the redeemed family everywhere will stand and sing the praises of God one day. You know what, friends? We sing the song of redemption now, but I think we'll sing it out too. Yeah. I'll pray for thou was saying, that's redeemed us to God. But I'm going to have every tribute congregation. I love to sing that song uh, in the house of my God and uh, uh, all the people that are around us uh, who believe uh, in uh, eternal security of the saints and believe uh, uh, that Jesus Christ saved them without the loss of one. Oh, yes, my friend, we say that and we rejoice and serve God as kings and priests today, relying upon not a try to Savior, but a try to Savior. I remember, in, uh, I remember over in, his, in uh, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1, I believe it. For he said, I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is. Well, that tells me this one. That tells me this one. I'm going to, listen, friends, if you think that God is working for you, all you've got to do is put a little bit of assistance on that, I've got to do for you. God will not give that glory to anybody else. He said, I, even I, am the Savior, and beside me there is the Savior. And the Apostle Peter said uh, that there's no other name uh, under heaven that among men for God we must be saved. He said, Peter is there salvation in any other over in Acts chapter 4. Now, with that plan with Peter, you know, all those Jews thought Peter had really done a good work. He said, why do you look so steadfast on us as though we have done some good things? Oh, no. He said, faith. He was named. Christ said, you faith in him, they just didn't hold. Then he declared, there's a salvation in the other. He's preaching Jesus Christ. Somebody says, I thought you talking about eternal salvation. I don't care what kind of salvation it is. Amen. 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 He, he saved me eternally. He saved me timely. That's right. He saves me gospelly. That's right. He delivers me from physical illness. That's right. Jesus is my Savior. That's right, he's the Savior. Listen, folks, people need to learn that there's only one Savior. That's Jesus Christ alone. I don't care what you need to live from. He's a little bit arrogant. The thing about it is, we need to believe more. That's what he says. We need to believe. When Jesus says pray, pray believe it. And you'll have it. Now, if you don't pray believe it, you expect to get it. No, read James chapter 1. He said, don't let that man think you receive anything. If you don't pray in faith, then what is faith? <coughs> believe. Oh, my friend, do you believe that Jesus Christ is saved? you believe this virgin born one is the Savior? The angel said, you call his name Jesus. By the way, Jesus didn't say that. said he's going to, he came to save his people from their sin. So they're his by gift. God chose them. He gives them to the Son to redeem. And there he is with the Father before the world again. Don't ask me to explain all that. 
watching this, and I believe, I believe we were his position before this whole world began. I believe in Romans 9, where he talks about taking these off, two sons, and two children may not get born, either haven't done any good or any evil. And what he's talking about, he's talking about election time. One boy represents the elect, the other the non elect. And he says uh, that and God can be sovereign. He said it wasn't by works. It wasn't of him that will, but it's him that called. And it's of him that showed mercy. All my friends, there's a stoop on the mercy of God's part than any of us will ever have in heaven. Because Jesus came to save sinners. We all are sinners. All of them are like Jesus. All straight. Every one going the wrong way. But I said this. So if we ever get to him, we've got to be saved. We've got to be delivered from here to there. I'm good morning. I mean, the price of things, brother. All right? So, he said in the 10th chapter of John, my sheep, uh oh, he, he's called him sheep. My sheep, that always has to have to possession. He says, my sheep, hear my voice. You think they don't hear it? My sheep, Hear my voice. Now, in the Bible, there's a difference between hearing voice and hearing words. I hope you understand that. I'm not going to try to deal on that. But he said, My sheep hear my voice. He said, I know them. Oh, I like that. I know them. And they follow me. Well, how many did they follow? He said, I know them. And I'm going to tell you something, friends. Here's one preacher standing before you today that believes that when Jesus said, I know them, I think he knows everyone personally. Amen. I don't think he's talking about just something all in a bushel basket that's going to all up somewhere. He knows us that way too. But he's talking about he knows them personally. He won't tell you what. He calls them by name. He's got their name in his book, and they'll never be erased. He turns security. All the danger in the book. One time when Jesus sent out the, his disciples and he gave them power over unclean spirits, told them not to take the cloak all of a to come back rejoice and rejoice. Why? Because the power of the Lord God Almighty was upon them in so much as the unclean spirits were driven out of God's people. And they came back and the Lord said, Did you like anything? He said, No. Even the unclean spirits are certainly come to us. He said, Rejoice not that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice rather. Your names are written. You've got something to rejoice about, And like that, Paul said to the fifty brother, he said, I say unto you, rejoice and again, rejoice. I tell you, friends, we've got something to rejoice about. Because Jesus came in the world to save us. We read it. We read it. Don't emphasize, we read it. We read it. And he's still ready. I like the song that sang sometimes the same. We don't have it in our hymn books, but I sang it down at home sometimes. Those who have strayed for salt for the master. He who once gave his life to the sheep. Out on the mountains, yet he is thirsty. Bringing them in forever to keep. Yes, my friend, one for one, here, yonder, there, he's bringing them in, into his fold. Bring them into that number. Their names have been written in him. He knows them by name. He chose them. We, uh, in, 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 uh, before the world ever began, in the ancient of days, and he redeemed them from their sins, and he's calling them through the person of the Holy Spirit unto himself. And they're being drawn to him by that Holy Spirit of God. All right, he says, so I sheep hear my voice. I know them. They call me, and I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. But here's what I want. Neither shall even have to put out of my head. My Father who is gave them me is greater than all. And man, if they were kept out of my Father's hand, I am the Father of all, eternal security. I bring Jesus Christ in the world to say so. I read in John chapter 17, verse 2. So let's get verse 1. These words say, Jesus, this is his eyes, heaven said, Father, thou art come. Glorify thy Son, thy Son, and also glorify thee. Thou will give me power over all flesh, that he shall give eternal life to as many as thou hast given me. Verse 3, this is life eternal, that they may go be the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast said. You know what God has said? Huh? You got eternal life. You know what Jesus Christ has said? You got eternal life. That's talking about his relationship, my brother. You know it. Jesus came to save you, and he makes himself known to you. And, and, and he makes you know that it's, 
Why? Because Jesus loved me, and I hope I love him. I hope I prove him, because on that day I really love him. Now, I go around here and, and deceive you, but I can't deceive the Lord. And I won't deceive you very far either, I'll guarantee you that. I go around here and say, I love the Lord, and I love the Lord, and I'm doing everything to serve him. Why? Christ, whatever, 
didn't have a car right there. I mean, we had to put it in where we were. So I know something about the ministry of Christ. We had to put it to the house of God. And we go there and sit there and I go tell you, they preach every time boy, they talk about Jesus. I said they're like a little bird, mouth wide open, just clearly my soul, the very name of Jesus. Because you see, I knew the name of my Savior. And I've always loved the name Jesus. It teaches me something inside here that I can't explain. It just brings such a peace and such a calm in my soul and such a serenity there and such a, uh, an assurance, such an assurance and such power in there that I know all the And is that, that's all a sweet, sweet, sweet voice speaks and says, peace, all is well. I'm going to tell you all is well in the course of glory today. Somebody said, I don't understand about all this wickedness going on. All is well in the course of glory. Ain't nothing going on about the knowledge of God. Don't you think there is? Things I'm going to tell you, my friends, are wrapping up. But I swear, I, here's a preacher that believes the end is not far off. I'm not ashamed to tell you that I believe the end is not very far off. I can't tell you when, but I believe it's very close. And I welcome the day. I say it, you can say, come to the Lord Jesus. I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. I was in the back too long ago, getting ready to come up to a meeting, and uh, I believe it's coming up to here. And uh, I stand there talking to a teller there, right? uh, we're good friends, went to high school together, and uh, she's a very fine Christian woman, but I want to be talking about uh, the stains in the scriptures. And I tell her, I'm getting ready to go to a meeting. And she said, oh, I wish I could go. I have to stay here anymore. I said, well, uh, you be praying for us. And God bless us with good meeting. I said, you know what? I said, I believe that this whole world is about to come to an end. And I said, I'm like John on the Isle of Patmos. I said, even so, come to Lord Jesus. About that time, there was a woman standing there beside me. And I didn't pay her mind. She'd been listening to me preach every about 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and when I said that, she said, oh, no. I mean, they don't like the baby. <laughs> I said, what's the matter? She said, oh, not yet. I want to see my children read. I said, well, where would a better place would it be? <laughs> I said, even so, come, Lord Jesus. Ah, oh, is that your thing? Do you want the temporal and uh, the temporal things of this whole world? Or do you want to see the things that all about me, brother? I don't say no holy thing for me. Uh, oh, no. I said, I said, you don't love your folks? Yes, I love my folks. But I'll tell you what, I'm looking for that grand girl of your next world. Yes, I love my folks. I thank God for the things I have. But they don't need anything to me. As far as my Savior is concerned, I'm not going to teach all that he is my Savior. My wife didn't save my soul. My children didn't save my soul. I didn't save theirs. My mother didn't save me. My God didn't. My father didn't save me. God did. My Savior saved me. I'll tell you, my friend, yes, I love them. But I hope I love my Jesus more. And I hope you love your Jesus. Lord, now you knew you couldn't today. You step out on his promises. You be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you've already been baptized, then you're still not doing your duty. And God has laid something on your heart and you're not doing it. Can I tell you today? You do it. You prove you love your heart. I'm not making that commitment unto the Lord. I've been talking to a young couple for about two weeks, and the Lord's blessed us in a wonderful house service together in my home. I was a Bible doctor, and they don't understand. And this woman cries out. She said, Oh, I feel like. I need to make a commitment. I said, sister, if you feel that way, you ought to make it up. I said, you need to make that commitment. I went to the plane holding back here. They don't understand the doctrines. I said, listen, uh, you're not required to understand all the doctrines uh, uh, before you get in the church. I uh, said, Jesus said, take your mind. I uh, look upon you and learn of me. I said, the thing to do, if you have that commitment in your heart, uh, God's telling you to do it. You ought to do it. That's what his name says. Uh, because if you love it, if you want to, you ought to do it. And he'll teach you along the way. You grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So don't sit back there on the beach if you don't understand all the doctrine and the Lord is laying on your heart and make that commitment to Him. How to come into the grand old church? Now I'll tell you that Jesus is your Savior. He's your Savior and you ought to serve Him while you live in this world. Oh, my friend, we need to serve Him better. We need to serve Him more. Brother Russell, you'll never know how about that sermon you preached to this poor boy. As now I stand before you, uh, you said so much good stuff there uh, uh, that uh, I don't like to try to repeat I'll just sit and say amen, brother. Amen. 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 Oh, yes. May we have that commitment towards what this Jesus Christ came in the world to save you say. His people are brought in divine relationship with him and drawn to him by the Spirit of God. And I had him got down to something I want to get to here about how he 
saves us. For I told you that they are part of God to know Him. And Jesus Christ saved them. Well, how did He save them? How did He save them? I read over and gone again to chapter 10 where Jesus said, I am a good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. You mean I'm saved by his death? Yes. I read in John chapter first John chapter two verse eight. He that is the sin is on the devil, so the devil sinner is on the beginning. For this purpose was the Son of God manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Oh my friends, I'm happy to come to you today and preach to you one who is able to destroy the works of the devil. And because he destroyed the works of the devil, all he declares all power over the heaven earth is given unto me. He tells his disciples, Go be that for a priest. My friends, what do we have for priests? Preaching conquering Savior, preaching mighty warrior, come down from heaven to destroy the works of the devil. In Hebrews 2 and 14, it tells me, for it is what's the children of the faith, the of God, he also likewise took part of the same. That through them, he might destroy him. That had, had, I like that, had the power of death. You know what? He brought sin and death upon the human race. Yes, he did. Up to the first rest of Adam, uh, no, in the garden of Adam and Eve, he brought sin upon the human race and death by sin. And all he got the victory, my soul. He just thanks he did. He ain't fooling nobody. He's not even fooling himself. He's over there. Listen, the Lord Jesus Christ came and conquered him. Yes, he did. He conquered death. He conquered hell. And he conquered the grave. And he did it for you. That's right. He came to destroy the works of the devil. You see, the devil brought us into a state of sin and separation from God. But Jesus, through his death, destroyed that and brought you out of it. That's what he did. He brought you out of it. And now, as a result, he's sitting there. God's right hand, expecting to all his enemies, but his enemies he made his foot to the last enemy to destroy his death. You believe it? Yes, amen. Amen. The last enemy to destroy his death. Then cometh the end. I can give them something I say about this. Rain business, I believe he's raining now. I know he's raining now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's raining now. He's raining right in your little old heart. He's it out in your soul. He's it in glory. And he's it in your life. My friends, the kingdom of heaven is the rule, the reign, the realm of our Savior and our God Almighty. That's in the whole of the gospel age. That's about when you're ready to go over the I believe it's just about to wind up. I believe the devil's been loose. He's gathered the God's made God army together now. Has been for a while. But it's soon be over. He's not going to get us, brother. We're going home. Jesus died for us. All right. I read the Hebrew letter. Where it talks about the Lord Jesus Christ. And in John chapter 10, where it talks about he believed his life and sheep. In the Hebrew letter, it tells us that it wasn't by the blood of bulls and goats, but by his own blood. Now, the unity wants this. Listen to what I'm saying. He entered it once and over his house. Not with the blood of ghosts he had it, but by his own blood. Well, in his own blood, there had to be a death, right? There'd be a life sacrifice, right? By his own blood, he did it once. Heavy, heavy, heavy. <coughs> Obtain eternal redemption. Ah, oh, eternal security. Eternal redemption for us. And over in Mind 26, he talks about a coming once in the world to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Where did he say to by sacrificing himself? That ought to tell us something. That ought to incite us to want to serve him. That ought to incite us to want to love him more. And to put our lives into a certain thing, a commitment to it. You know, I don't think Brother Paul we preach enough about making a commitment to the Lord. Amen. Making a commitment to the Lord. <laughs> If I say make a commitment, I mean make a commitment. I'm going to say something right easy here. Don't take it in love. Don't wait until your retirement age to make a commitment. Amen. Amen. I mean that love. Now, y'all will tell you that, okay? The blessing, my friend, is in the living. And not just the hearing. I'm going to tell you what. You're robbing yourself, and you're more, more than that. You're robbing God. You're robbing the Lord. When you don't make that commitment, you pay your students to him. That's right. He's worthy of our praise. He's not. Fall on his love. You know the Bible says in Romans 5 and verse 8, somewhere on there, 
Well, God commended his love to us that his while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Everybody say Christ died for us. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10, he tells the Bible who's real here are sanctified by the offering of his Father once for all. And by verse 12, he talks about it again. And then by verse 14, he says, For by one offering he hath perfected for it. Listen to that. He hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. So Jesus died for us. He saved us. And he saved his own blood. We're redeemed. I've been corrupting the things of silver and gold with all his own precious blood. Blood is the Lord. Blood is the Lord of the Lamb of God, the Holy God of the Lord. And the Lord of this country, when you use my prayer, just think about these things. Jesus Christ, let us close the point again. May this sink into your heart today. This is a faithful Savior. And I'll, especially this part right here. Worthy of all acceptation. That Christ Jesus came in the world to save sanctity. Now listen, dear sinner friend, accept that. And if you accept that in the tenor of that text, you will accept your responsibility to serve that one that loves you. you May the Lord bless you. I love you. Pray for us. Come to see us when you can. I pray that the great Spirit of God will continue on this week. I'll tell you, my friends, would it be wrong today for us to pray for that God? Let God pray to the church. Amen. Know that the church be saved. We be wrong today to pray that God will let one of our friends that's walked away straight and back to this and God by the Holy Spirit would draw him back by the church of God. Oh, my friends, we be wrong. No, it would be wrong to be right. We be wrong, my friends, to pray for those that are there in unbelief that God by his mighty power would turn their hearts like he did. A sore Tarsus of old, and that they turn and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, my friends, let God bless you. 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 Let
a ministry of Paradise Primitive Baptist Church in Arlington, Texas. Paradise Primitive Baptist Church is located at 5300 Mansfield Road in Arlington, Texas. Services begin at 1030 each Sunday morning. Plan to come and worship with us. To find out more about Paradise Primitive Baptist Church, visit www.paradisepbc.org. Be sure to visit our website for articles, video, and audio sermons, as well as biblical answers to your questions. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join us again next week. May God richly bless you.